How's it going everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be going over the markets, taking a look at the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. And let me tell you, we have a lot to talk about since the markets were up a whopping 7% today. And I also want to go over with you all what I personally did in the markets today, plus a bunch of stocks, a bunch of ETFs that I'm watching and that I'm looking to trade in the this current environment that we're in. And like you all read in the title, we're also going to be talking about Carnival Cruise Line. And one of my biggest trades of today was with Carnival Cruise Line. And kind of what I plan on doing here with CCL over the next couple of weeks. So if you guys enjoy this video, hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and also join our Discord group chat and our Facebook group linked down below in the description box if you want to be further connected with the community. That is free of charge. Just letting you guys know you don't have to pay a single dime for that. So let's get into it and start off here with the S&P and and again, a whopping 7% day here in the S&P 500, up 175 points. And let me tell you guys, when I saw the futures yesterday up, what was it, like 1%, 2%, whatever it was, I was not expecting the markets to be up 7% the next day, which, again, it goes to show you, like I've said a bunch in these videos, how the market can always end up throwing you for a loop. It can always throw tricks at you, and it always does, not always, but a lot of the time, it does what you least expect. And for me, this, I did not expect it, but it happened nonetheless, and we're going to analyze what the charts are telling us here. So the bulls on this hourly chart, they're in charge. This is very clear. We've broken above 2640. This is the level that I was watching later in the day today, and let me show you guys exactly where we broke that. And you can see it here, 2640. It was actually right at the last 10 minutes, right in the last 10, 15 minutes of the market that we broke that, which at this point, we're probably going to fill the gap. Honestly, there's a high likelihood, at least, we fill the gap up to 2735, which is the next level of resistance. So to put it in simple terms, guys, the fact that we broke 2630, 2640, which was a resistance multiple times in the past couple of weeks, that means the bulls took over. That means the bulls are currently in charge. So to the upside, the S&P, I'd say, in the short term has roughly a 2, 2.5% uh, potential, which again is at the top of that range. And that could definitely happen here in the short term, again, as the bulls are in charge right now. And the Dow Jones up almost 8% today, guys, almost 8% up 1,600 points today, which is absolutely insane. And what's the reason this market went up? Well, the truth is, your guess is as good as mine, because I have no idea. And I'd love to know any theories you guys have down below in the comments here about that. Uh, but for my theory, honestly... I don't know. I, I just see a lot more negative things than positive things at this point, like I've been saying in these videos. But we know that the market is a forward looking um, you know, vehicle, right? It always kind of tries to price in the negative things, which at this point, a lot of people argue that the negative things are already priced in. Am I in that camp? Not entirely. Like I've been saying in these videos, I still think there is downside to come, but that's just me being honest. And again, I'd love to know what you guys have to say in the comments. And either way, guys, whether you're bullish or bearish in the short term, a lot of the time, it just helps to, to focus on the technicals and trade what's in front of you, which is why I'm saying now that the bulls are in charge, we have to trade this market like that, like the bulls are in charge, 
and we might go along, let's say, some market ETFs that go up with the market, some individual stocks that do well. But of course, if the tides turn, then we'll go bullish. We're pretty much just following what the trends are showing us. And in terms of the NASDAQ today, guys, killer day up 7.35%, up $550. Incredible day. And just like the S&P, Dow, and uh, um, just pretty much those two, I don't know about the Russell. I don't really check the charts on the Russell 2000 too much, but just like the S&P and the Dow on this hourly chart, we are seeing a breakup. We are seeing the break above 7950, 8000, which is is extremely bullish here in the NASDAQ, as well as that move above the major moving averages. So if we pull back up the S&P, pull up this four-hour chart, we're not completely out of the overall downtrend when we're just looking at the moving averages. So if we do see the tides turn to the downside again, which a lot of people argue that, the, the bear market's over, which again, I'm not completely in that camp, but let's say we do rally up, and we do see a turn of events to the downside here, we might see some resistance at some point under this 180 SMA or on this four-hour chart, whether that's at 2800 2900 it depends it just depends on kind of where this thing ends up smoothing out to because we know as kind of more days come into the market that's when the moving averages kind of um, build more data and smooth smooth out over time so we'll see where it ends up going and uh, that could be a resistance in the next couple of weeks but we'll just have to see and as always let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts on the market. Let's do a quick little CV update. This is by no means something that I talk about a lot on my channel, but since it is something that is causing everything here, we might as well talk about some numbers very quickly. So as of now, when I'm recording this video on the 6th of April, I almost forgot the date, guys, as all of these days are slowly blending in because of the quarantine and being locked in this house. I know a lot of you guys know how that is, but either way, 1.33 million cases worldwide. In the United States, there's about 360 cases, and the interesting thing is, I didn't fact check this, but I believe the uh, population of the U.S. is roughly 350 million, 360 million, which means if there's 360,000 cases now in the U.S., that's one tenth of one tenth of the population um, is infected. So, in other words, it's not one percent; it's point one percent, if my math is correct, which. That is, I'd say, a decent amount. Um, you know, I'm no doctor. I'm no specialist by any means, guys. Trust me. I don't know a lot about... Uh, I know a lot about working out, health, fitness, that that sort of stuff, but I don't know a lot about um, viruses and stuff with diseases of, of that nature. But one-tenth of one-tenth of the population, you can't argue um, that that's, that's kind of a decent amount of uh, people, right? So now that we talked about that, again, I don't focus on that too much on the channel, but figured to update with, uh, you guys with it. Let's go over what I personally did in the markets. And my first trade today was in CCL. And I'll dive deeper into CCL here in about two, three minutes after we talk about my trades very quickly. But this was the first trade that I made. And let me look at my notes to see where my entry and exit was so I can give you guys precise numbers. So my entry, and this was actually a pretty long um, day trade. Honestly, this was kind of a swing trade, but, but at the same time, it was a day trade, but in, in, in a weird term, uh, in a weird sense, I kind of swing traded it throughout the day, but either way, it's a day trade, guys. But I got in at 979 after this big, pretty big drawdown from about 10 bucks down to about 950. So we saw a pretty big drop down there, about 5%. And at this point, we were testing this moving average, but I believe I got in before the test, um, which again, it's it's a bit riskier, um, not waiting for confirmation, but either way, I got in before the test at $9.79, a bit earlier, right? So I held through some pain there, but either way, we can see CCL popped up. And again, 
I held this a bit longer, not not than I not than I expected, but you know, I held it for a pretty decent amount of time because it remained bullish throughout the time that I was in it. And the truth is, guys, I actually sold out after it peaked at 1096 as it started heading back down. And I exited this position at $10.73. So a pretty big move here considering that you know, my, my my goals are around 1%, 2% a day, right around that area. Considering that 1%, 2% goals, this 10% move that I had today, let's see, it was roughly 10%, maybe like 9%. Let's take a look here, guys. You can see, yeah, roughly 9% move on the dot here. That beat my, uh, you know, my uh, daily goal by a lot, right? And I have CCL put options too. A bit risky here. A bit risky here. And those options momentarily today, guys, they were worth a penny. But I checked on my app. Um, they're actually back up uh, to about, you know, I think like 45 cents a contract. And I bought them at about 50 cents or something like that. So I'm slightly down on those puts. But either way, guys... I made a nice amount of money here today on CCL with that 9% move. And another ETF I traded today was GLD. And this is one we've been talking about and calling out here on this channel. And it was up 2.77%. And this is actually a move I made while I was holding CCL. And this is actually, let me check my phone for the entry exit. This did extremely well today because of gold. Did you, did you guys see gold? It was up over $1,700 an ounce today, which is absolutely incredible. And G GLD, I got in at $154.90. It was right here. This is the dip I bought it on, $154.90. And based on this exit here, $155.25, I ended up exiting right here. That was the move. It was kind of a V-shaped um, kind of the V-shape recovery people keep talking about in the markets here. Um, that is exactly kind of what I played. This is more kind of like a U. Either way, it's a cup, right? We went down 154.90. We popped back up, sold near the resistance. And that was not too big of a move whatsoever. It was like half a percent, maybe even less. But either way, I made money and profit is profit, guys. So let me know down below, what did you guys do today? That is what I did today. Now let's dive deeper into CCL and kind of why this stock was moving today like crazy. So the first thing is there was a 13G filing from a Saudi Arabian sovereign wealth fund that shows an 8.2% stake or 43.5 million shares of Carnival, which makes them the third largest stakeholder in the company. And this is a recent move here. I'm not sure if they got it at $8, $10, $12. I'm not too sure on the specifics. Um, I'm not even sure if that, actually that might be in the third, uh, 13G filing. But either way, I'm not sure about the specifics, but... They made a roughly $370 million investment in Carnival. And I know, guys, a lot of the time when people, big funds, not, not people, big funds, they buy a stock, maybe not everybody rushes to buy it, right? The more seasoned investor doesn't base their decisions off of what funds are doing, what major players are doing, right? But beginners out there, you have to realize, not saying that they, they followed the fund on this move, but a lot of the times, beginners, when they see big funds, analysts recommending a stock, whatever, they follow that. And that could be why we saw a 20% move today. You know, that is a theory. Is that why it happened? I don't know. I have no idea, to be honest. But just, just making a, a theory here, that could be why. And again, I'd love to know your thoughts on that. But either way, guys, CCL at this point, is an interesting stock with everything going on. The CV has this company not not in, in uh, operation until, I believe, mid-May. The company has suspended its operations until mid-May. And get this, when I was reading this earlier, guys, doing more research into it, Wells Fargo estimates 
that Carnival Cruise Line, as the business is sitting idle, not making money, not not profits, nothing, right? They're burning roughly $1 billion per month in cash, which is absolutely insane. But another thing the Wall Street, or not the Wall Street, the Wells Fargo analysts said is they believe CCL has enough liquidity to keep them afloat, no pun intended, no pun intended, guys, until November, right? So with, you know, I believe they're they're raising a lot of debt. That's what I was reading. This debt has a has a higher interest rate on it. And honestly, they they're they're raising shares or, or they already had a, a share filing for eight million for eight dollars per share, which they're uh you know offering shares to raise capital. So at this point, they could end up making it through um, to November. But the really risky thing here, guys, and why I do have those put options is if the CV takes a turn for the worse, if these operations get pushed from mid-May to maybe, you know, being suspended for mid-May, maybe to through the summer, you know, if this company can't get back on its feet in terms of actually sending a couple ships. It's not going to send its whole fleet out, but maybe sending 10-15% of its ships out. You know, if they don't get back to that in these next couple of months, you know, they could easily go bankrupt if they run through that cash. And that's kind of the risk you're running here with CCL. It totally depends. The CCL stock investment right now, it totally depends on the CV. If it gets worse, it stalls the operations from coming back. This company will most likely go bankrupt, guys. Let's be honest here. But if things get better, if we're viewing this more optimistically here, and they start operating in the summer, you know, they'll probably get through this. And uh, prices under $10, if we get to like $5, $6, these could be prices that are very attractive long term. And have I made a long term investment in CCL yet? No. Am I? I don't know, guys. Probably not. If it gets to five, six dollars, like I said yesterday, I might take a speculative position in it. But you know, just because I'm not long-term investing in it, it doesn't mean that I'm not trading it, guys. It does not mean that I'm not taking advantage of these swings as a trader. And uh, that's honestly what I'm going to continue to do here with CCL, as I did today. And honestly, in the short term here. I could definitely see CCL go higher. That's that's me being completely honest. We saw a rally in the past from $8 to $19. Will we rally from $10 now back to $19? Probably not. Not saying it won't happen, but I'm not expecting that. But to rally from, let's say, $10, bucks, maybe to $13, $12, $14, I think that could happen. I think that's very, very possible to the point where Again, we can trade the ins and outs of that and maybe short it as it comes back down. And again, I have these put options that I'm holding and maybe I'll buy more. Um, we'll end up seeing what happens. And kind of that's that's the thoughts that I have around Carnival Cruise, uh, Cruise Line right now. Very risky, very risky, but... The ins and outs, these swings, they offer a lot of potential for traders out there. So let's get into some other stocks here, guys. And let me tell you, the markets were up 7%. We already saw that. A lot of stocks did a lot better than that. And I mean a lot. One of them was Uber. Uber was up, last time I checked, 15%. Seems like they closed up about 14%. Very, very strong move there. And... Honestly, guys, although many of you are bullish on the market, you think it's going to come back up to all-time highs, for those that kind of follow the trend and, and play it the way it is, you know, kind of like I said earlier, this could be an opportunity to get short on a lot of these stocks if we end up seeing the technicals kind of turn on us. And that's what a lot of people try to focus on here. We, we focus on stocks that might get a bit overbought, and then once they start to show a drop, uh, you know, either a, a critical support break, some, some changes in the moving averages, whatever it is, right, that could be a sign to go short. And 
for Uber, I'm definitely watching that. Not saying that they're going to go back to 12, whatever, but I'm looking to see if we can get a short move here in these next couple of days, whether it's put options, actually shorting the stock, whatever it may be. Another one is McDonald's. This one did very well today, guys, up 10%. It's rare when you see McDonald's up 10%. Let's be honest. It's one of those blue chip companies that, honestly, anything above a 2% and, you know, even a 2% green day would be, oh, wow, McDonald's did very well today. 3%, oh, wow, that's good. 5%, holy crap. 10%, oh, my goodness, right? That's kind of how it is with McDonald's. Up $16 per share. And just like Uber, you know, this could be an opportunity to go short. We're getting close to these moving averages here, especially if we get resistance there and we don't break out, you know, that could be an opportunity in, um, you know, McDonald's. PayPal did very well today as well, up about 10% as well, up $10. And just like McDonald's, right at that resistance here on the four-hour chart, this could be a short dream if this ends up going back to 80 bucks, right? So these are a couple stocks I'm watching. SQ, guys, absolutely incredible. 15% in the green today, up $6. Honestly, I could see this one rally a bit more. I could see this one get to the mid-50s probably um, before maybe seeing more downside. But that's just me speculating here on, this, on the technicals, right? Back to McDonald's, based on these technicals, I can't really see it going much higher. Um, I can see it going a bit lower before I can see it going um, a bit higher, right? And another stock is MasterCard, ticker symbol M. A. This one had a ridiculously good day, up 12.2%, up almost $30 per share here, guys. And this is one that's approaching a major moving average as well here on the four-hour chart, guys. So these, am I jumping to go long in them right now? No, I am still cash heavy right now um, and, and pretty much all my accounts, right? I don't have any open swing positions. Um, really just day trading what the trends are giving me now. And I'm not confident. And for me to go along, guys, I have to be in, in swing trading, in, in terms of swing trading, I have to be very confident that the stock is going to go up, right? And I'm it continue to go up. And I'm not there yet. I don't want to force anything. So I feel more comfortable sitting in cash. And if I were to swing trade anything, guys, it would be GLD. This thing has been crushing it. And now that we're talking about GLD, we might as well look at gold, guys. Gold today cracked this level of uh, of seventeen hundred dollars, we got up to seventeen fifty here in terms of these futures, and this played out perfectly to what I talked about a couple videos ago. If you guys recall, we called this bounce on gold. We said sixteen hundred, fifteen ninety, that general area. Well, we held that before. This is a very key level to watch for gold, and as we started rising back up. 1600, 10, 1620, 30. This was a huge move, and a lot of opportunity was built in that move, right? Because we got huge moves in GLD, we got moves in GDX, right? GDX is um, Vanek Vectors Gold Miners ETF, which JNUG, J N U G, it's a gold ETF, um, a miners ETF, leveraged ETF that goes up whenever GDX is going up. So a lot of these are doing very well now because gold is is crushing it. So and, 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 of course, if you own physical gold, that's appreciating as well. So these are just a couple to watch, in my opinion, um, if you do think in the short term gold has a lot more potential. And I'm in the camp of, of thinking that. I think gold has a lot of potential, 1800 1900 2000 I think these price targets are not too far-fetched, and that's just my personal uh, opinion here. You guys can argue and, and disagree with me, and I'd love to know your opinion down below in the comments. 
comment section. So let's talk about crude oil very quickly. To be honest, guys, I wasn't watching crude oil too much today. I was too busy with CCL. But either way, crude oil was down 7%, down $2 per share, uh, not per share, per barrel, right? And it seems like overall on the four hour chart, we are seeing a bit of resistance here at 28 bucks and under that 180 SMA. So at this point, there could be some short opportunities in maybe USO, which was down 7% today. This is one short term put option, could be a fantastic opportunity. You know, the big players, Exxon, let's take a look at what they did. Exxon was actually up 3.2% today. Chevron, which I forget their ticker symbol every video, is it CVH? CVX, why do I keep thinking it's CVH? CVX, it was up 7% today, which is quite interesting, guys, right? Oil's down, the stock's are doing pretty well. It's like it's like it's pretty interesting, right? And uh Occidental Petroleum down or up rather 3.38%. And when it comes to natural gas, we saw yet again a ridiculous push to the upside. And I mean ridiculous, up 8% in terms of these May futures here, these May contracts up 13 cents. And that means natural gas went up. That means you gas did very well. You gas was up if we take a look at it. 18% today. It's up after hours, so it's up about 20% at this point. And am I hopping into you gas right now? Absolutely not. I think it's too late. I think the move has been made. And the beauty the beautiful thing is I can get into degas, which is the inverse to you gas, and that goes up whenever natural gas is going down. And, and did you guys see on that four hour chart, there's a pretty critical level of resistance coming up here on natural gas on these NGK 20 contracts here. And that is right under this 180 SMA. And if we do see some resistance there, and I'm kind of waiting for this, I have cash ready to go. I'm going to get into degas tomorrow, guys. That is the move as of right now. That's the plan, that uh, rather. And um, I think there's a lot, a lot of potential. From 270, we've fallen from 420 to 270. I could see a move. I could see a move there, and I'm uh, just, just waiting. I'm waiting for it to happen, waiting for the opportunity. And uh, I'll pounce when and if that opportunity does end up coming. So, overall, guys, I feel like we talked about everything that I wanted to go over in this video. We talked about some stocks that did very well today. I gave you all kind of my opinion on the markets, what I personally did today. And I'd say, again, the biggest move I'm watching for tomorrow um, is going to be DGAS. It's going to be maybe another leg up in CCL to catch that. You know, Space, SPCE, Virgin Galactic, this is another company that, technically speaking here, um, you know, it's slowly breaking out. We could see another pretty big move um, in Virgin Galactic from, let's say, $14 back up to $16, $17. And as always, before I do end off this video, guys, um, I'm watching the market ETFs. That's that's kind of the bread and butter that uh, of my trading arsenal, right? And these market ETFs, TQQQ and SQQQ, that's a pair that tracks the NASDAQ. SQQQ is, if you want to bet against the NASDAQ going down at a 3x rate, and by that I mean, let's say the NASDAQ's down 1%, SQQQ goes up 3%, and obviously, TQQQ is the opposite, and SPXS and SPXL are two that I trade based on the S&P 500. SPXS goes up when the s and is going down, and SPXL is going up when the s and is going up. So overall, that is it for today's video, guys. If you did enjoy it, feel free to go down below and hit that like button for me, and consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see further content like this, and if you want to support all the free content Content that I'm putting up here on YouTube, feel free to go down below in the description box and get your two free stocks from Webull, valued up to $1,400. And all you have to do to get those stocks is put in $100 into the account and you'll get those two free stocks valued up to $1,400. And again, that supports me, that supports all the free content here on YouTube. And I do appreciate you very much if you do do that. And, uh, 
again, guys, I, I love you guys. This is a very um, strong community that we're building. I'm getting emotional now. <laughs> but either way, guys, um, that's linked down below in the description. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.